Welcome back for another video. Today's video will be about the infamous Los Angeles police officer who chose the thug life and brought more scrutiny to the Los Angeles Police Department than it already had before. The mastermind behind what went down in the history of LAPD corruption was a man named Rafael Antonio Perez. Born on August 22, 1967 in Umacao, Puerto Rico, who then moved to Brooklyn, New York in 1972. He lived in other states on the east coast of the United States such as Patterson, New Jersey and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Rafael graduated high school in 1985. After high school, Rafael joined the United States Marine Corps. The two states he was stationed at was Maine and California. He was married to a woman named Lori Charles and had divorced after he was caught having an affair. After four years of service, he joined the Los Angeles Police Department. Rafael had applied for other police departments but had been denied from failing background checks. Growing up in his teen years into adulthood, Rafael was influenced and fascinated by gang culture. Rafael then married LAPD dispatcher Denise Aubrey. After his first three years on the force, he was transferred from patrol to the narcotics unit in 1992. A few years later, he was assigned to the Rampart Division and assigned to Crash. The Rampart Division of LA includes Angelino Heights, Echo Park, Historic Filipino Town, Lafayette Park, MacArthur Park, Pico Union, Temple Beaudry, Virgil Village, and Westlake. CRASH stands for Community Resource Against Street Hoodlums, so in basic terms, it's an anti-gang unit in the LAPD. Throughout his time in CRASH, Perez made a name for himself being an asset to the unit. Perez had influenced other LAPD officers to dishonor their oath along with Perez. No citizen, law-abiding or not, was safe from the Rampart scandal of those who were sworn to protect the community. However, the Rampart scandal had begun in 1996. Javier Francisco Ovando from the 18th Street Gang was shot by Officer Perez and his partner, Nino Dirty. Javier was left paralyzed and was framed for the wrongful officer-involved shooting. Ovando didn't remember much from the incident, but was unarmed and shot for no reason. Javier went to trial and was convicted of attempted murder due to the lies by LAPD and prosecutors. Perez claimed he and his partner Durden were using an apartment as an observation post to monitor drug activity in the neighborhood. Ovando, he said, burst into the apartment holding a Tech 22 semi-automatic pistol. Durden fired first, then Perez, hitting Ovando four times. When backup officers arrived, Ovando was on the floor bleeding heavily with the pistol at his side. On February 20th, 1997, Ovando was convicted and received 23 years and 4 months in prison. Javier Ovando's prison sentence had been thrown out after the truth had come out and was awarded $15 million from a lawsuit. On March 18, 1997, Frank Liga, an undercover LAPD officer, murdered Rampart Crash Officer Kevin Gaines in an apparent act of self-defense after he drove up beside Liga and flashed gang signs. Liga, a cop, killed another fellow cop, which is mirrored to gang members killing each other. Gaines was later to be found associated with Death Row Records, an associate of the Blood Street Gang who used LAPD personnel as security. LAPD determined Frank Liga acted in self-defense and was not racially motivated. On November 6, 1997, fellow LAPD officer David Mack orchestrated a bank robbery. $720,000 was stolen. Erilyn Romero, who was assistant manager, had sold out her boyfriend, then Officer David Mack, as the boss of the heist. Mack never talked about where the money was at. He received 14 years and 3 months in prison and was released May 14, 2010. February 26, 1998, Ishmael Jimenez, an 18th Street gang member, was brutally beaten by Rampart crash officer Brian Hewitt. Hewitt got thrills off beating people up. Hewitt was fired after Ishmael towed on him and received a $231,000 settlement. Later that year in March, eight pounds of cocaine was stolen from the evidence room. Police turned their attention to Officer Perez as a prime suspect. 
This caused the corrupt task force within Rampart Division to investigate corrupt officers. The task force had ordered it and did count checks for cocaine seized by police, or to see if they would end up stolen by Officer Perez again. The downfall of Perez's scheme occurred on August 25, 1998. Perez fell short of being a 10-year veteran of LAPD when he was arrested for tampering with evidence theft of cocaine close to worth a million dollars. Perez had accidentally implicated knowledge of the bank robbery his partner David Mack had done. This is what proved more probable cause of Mack's involvement that got him 14 years in prison. Perez ended up taking a plea deal for theft of evidence from the drugs stolen as well as providing information about other mentioned Rampart Division crimes committed by police officers. As a result, he received a five-year sentence as well as immunity. He then became an informant with the police department who he used to work with, providing intel about specific officers and the crimes they committed. Not all were found to have violated policies and the outcomes were different. Some officers ended up terminated from their jobs or voluntarily resigned or retired. The Temple Street Gang was brought into the mix after Perez framed Temple members as the culprits of the murder of Mexican Mafia's own Miguel Lizard Malfavon. The McDonald's on Alvarado Street was where Malfavon conspired to claim taxes from the Temple Gang. Anthony Stymie Adams was framed and named as the alleged killer who used a rifle to murder Malfavon. Perez had opened up insight into who Rampart had become from what they did, like act as street gang members carrying more weapons than the police, respect they could get if they made false arrest, violated human rights. They could even receive trophies or plaque awards for shooting civilian gang members whether justified or not. Even killing them was honorable. They would often meet up at the shortstop bar to celebrate crimes committed as law enforcement officers. After so many lawsuits were filed as well as $7 million paid to victims of the Rampart scandal, by 2000, the crash unit was no longer in existence. Rafael Perez had been released from prison on July 24, 2001, just after doing a three-year bid of a five-year sentence. Today, Rafael is staying under the radar, laid back, living a quiet life. The LAPD Rampart scandal will forever go down in the history books as one of the most exposed realities of everyday police corruption. It was so influential it was portrayed in the entertainment industry. For example, the 2001 film Training Day was based on the Rampart scandal, which depicts Denzel Washington as a corrupt LAPD narcotics detective training a rookie who sees how corrupt his field training officer is and is forced to get involved in his oath-breaking acts. In 2002, a TV show called The Shield, which aired from March 2002 to November 2008, which debuted a reenacted portraying of corrupt LAPD officers. In 2004, the film Crash was released, and the plot was about the real-life LAPD undercover officer Frank Liga and Officer Kevin Gang's shooting. Later that year, the popular rock star video game company released Grand Theft Auto. GTA San Andreas is a video game about Carl Johnson who lives in Los Santos, which is based off of Los Angeles battling crash unit officers led by voice actor Samuel L. Jackson, who plays the main antagonist Los Santos crash unit officer Frank Tenpenny, whose right-hand men are Officer Eddie Pulaski and Officer Jimmy Hernandez who harass, stalk, and threaten Carl Johnson, who is forced to do Crash's dirty work, until Carl takes out Pulaski, who watched Carl bury Officer Hernandez that was killed by Tenpenny, for snitching on Crash's dirty work, and who Tenpenny ordered Carl to bury Hernandez. In the final mission, Carl takes out Tenpenny, which the ending of the cutscene from the video game is similar to the ending of the film Training Day, where both corrupt criminally active police officers meet their demise. LAPD has since added and renovated their ways in which they choose to combat gang-related crimes due to always never-ending increasing crimes in Los Angeles, a great deal due to LA gangs. Today, LAPD has a division called the Gang and Narcotics Division, or GND. This division's primary focus and objective is to combat gang activity in ways gangs choose to earn money 
from drug trafficking, gun running, or any illegal way to earn money, as well as violent crimes committed by gang members. Whether it be gang members committing crimes against their rival counterparts or targeting your average law-abiding citizen, LAPD works with many allied agencies like the LA Sheriff's Department, other city police within LA County, as well as Homeland Security, and federal agencies like the FBI, ATF, and DEA, as well as the U.S. Marshal Services. The LAPD FBI Task Force work together arresting gang members who commit serious crimes, like murder, robbery, or any violent crimes. All these law enforcement agencies commonly work together to bring the RICO Act on gangs, which is the Racketeering Influenced Corrupt Organization Act. LAPD partnership with the ATF plays roles with seizing guns in federal gun cases. The DEA Los Angeles-based field job is to work with LAPD to combat drug trafficking. That's not to say all allies the LAPD works with are only limited to one role. They all seize, apprehend, and investigate everything that appropriately fits their role and their job's purpose, and encounter and stumble upon the same things. The LAPD continues to make headlines for questionable fatal officer-involved shootings and use of force. The cold hard truth is that LAPD will continue to conduct their way of serving and protecting as they see fit, and regarding whether their actions are in the right or wrong, time will only tell.